Iceberg, I hear you ask. In this, the scalper pandemic, where graphics cards have become as rare and precious as jewels, and actually buying one is akin to the black market human organ trade, what should I be looking for? Well, that's an excellent question. It just so happens I have a playlist of graphics card benchmarking videos for you to peruse, link in the doobly-doo. But in truth, I haven't tested every graphics card on the market, and you probably don't have time to watch all of my videos anyway, so here's a breakdown of what I think you should buy on a given budget. Bear in mind I am a British person, so my perspective is from my little hell island, and your local market may well be different from mine. If your budget is this low, my usual recommendation is to stick to zero and save your money. Use whatever you're using now to game with, be that an older card, an integrated GPU or a cloud gaming service, until you can afford to move up to the next bracket. If you know you're never going to be able to afford or justify spending more than £50 on a used graphics card however, I have a few thoughts. First is the old workhorse, the R9 270. Now, there are a ton of variations on this card, so when I say R9270, I'm also thinking of the HD7850 and R7370, but also the higher spec HD7870, R9270X and R9370. Whichever one you get, you can see from my videos on them that they can play the majority of games that aren't DirectX 12 exclusives, so sadly no Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Dirt 5. Although prices have gone up a little in the last 12 months, it should still be possible to find one within the £50 price range. Some, like the HD7850, are available in 1GB variants, which you should probably avoid. The later 300 series models are available in 4GB versions, which are preferable, but probably not worth spending over the odds to get. On the other hand, if you're lucky, you might find one of my surprise stars of 2021, the GTX 670, for under £50. This card is significantly more powerful than the R9 270, and is in fact closer to the R9 280 series in several games, though it still has the same issues with ageing drivers and lack of modern API support that the AMD card has. If they're closer to the same price, you should definitely consider the GTX 670 over the R9 270. This is the first price bracket where it becomes possible to get a gaming card that is fully DX12 capable, and the best cards for that would be either the RX460 or GT1030. The 460 is the superior card, but I've seen prices starting to creep up on them lately to the point where I might recommend saving for something better instead. The GT1030 is a card I haven't tested as yet, but from what I hear, the GDDR5 version is the model to get, and should be available for £80 brand new or 65 to 70 used. Be careful what you buy, as retailers aren't very good at advertising which memory type a given card has. In the realm of older cards, my personal favourite of late has been the NVIDIA Quadro K2200, a 4GB workstation variant of the GTX 750 Ti, available for between £75 and £90 on eBay. Being a workstation card, it does default to using the studio drivers, which isn't really a disadvantage these days. I actually use studio drivers with my RTX 3070. Although this Maxwell One card is compatible with the latest APIs, its Vulkan support is a bit sketchy, so isn't great for games like Doom Eternal. If driver and API support isn't critical to you, and be sure to check your favourite games first before you commit to anything, you might be able to pick up a card from the R9 280 family for this price. Sadly, the last few months have seen prices creep up over £100 on these cards, by which point I have other recommendations. This price bracket is still populated by mostly obsolete cards these days. In my opinion, a £140 budget should get you an RX 474GB or GTX 970, but the reality of it is that these cards have all jumped into the next bracket now. You should, with any luck, be able to pick up one of the 2012 or 2013 flagship cards for this kind of price. A GTX 780 Ti or R9 290 should be within reach, though you might have to put some offers in or bid on some likely looking auctions. 
The 780 Ti is the cheapest of the bunch, going for 100 to 120 pounds. And thanks to its lack of DX12 support and three gigs of VRAM, it should only be on your list if you can't find an R9 290 or 290X for the right price. If you can find a 390 or 390X in this price range, it's definitely the one to pick up for its still impressive 8GB frame buffer, but from what I've seen, the prices on these are getting too high compared to other, better options. If you want 1080 gaming, full driver and API support, and at least 3 gigs of VRAM, I'm afraid this is your starting price bracket. In this category, the obvious winners are the RX 470 and 480 4GB versions. The GTX 1060 3GB is in here too, but honestly it should be cheaper. The GTX 970 is one I'm reviewing soon, so I haven't formed a solid opinion of it yet, but in my mind it's in the same boat as the 1060. If on the off chance you can pick up an R9 Fury or Nano, or GTX 980 or 980 Ti in this bracket or slightly above, they might be worth the upgrade, though I wouldn't go out of my way to get one over a newer, more readily available Polaris card. Honestly, there's nothing at this price point I can recommend right now. On the new market, you can pick up a GTX 1650, but that card will underperform a used RX 470, so unless you have limited space in your PC, or you refuse to buy second hand, this probably shouldn't be on your list. By rights, £250 should be enough to buy a GTX 1660, 1070 or 980 Ti, and an RTX 2060 or GTX 1080 should cost about £300, but unless you get lucky, these don't seem like particularly likely scenarios. I can't recommend anything above this price in the scalper pandemic, but I know people will want to buy something. In that case, Rather than telling you what to buy, I'm going to suggest some cards you should leave well alone, especially at their current prices. The RX 570, 580 and 590, particularly the 8GB cards, have leapt in price. To gamers, they have no advantage over the 400 series, and so shouldn't cost significantly more. 8GB is great to have, but it's also great for mining, which is why they cost as much as a higher performance gaming card. By all means, buy one, but don't pay what the scalpers are asking for them. The RX Vega cards have likewise been hyped up by Ethereum mining, to the point where you can't get one for less than £500. If you have £500 to spare on a gaming graphics card, and choose one of these over, say, a brand new RX 6600 XT or a RTX 3060, you've made an error. LHR, or low hash rate 3060 Ti's and 3070's, can be had for 600 to 800 pounds, which is still an obscene amount, but 300 pounds less than the non-LHR versions fetch. Unless you're going to dedicate your PC to mining for at least the next six months, you don't need the higher hash rate models. RX 5000 series card pricing just blows my mind. The 5500 XT 8GB costs more than a GTX 1660. The 5700 costs almost double the new RX 6600 that all the big reviewers are saying it's just a rehash of. I know, it's because mining stuff again, but rest assured, if you're looking for a gaming card and think the cost of the RX 5000 series is going to reflect its performance, think again. Finally. If you are thinking of spending a thousand pounds or more on a graphics card, just stop. Take six to eight hundred pounds of that one thousand, buy yourself a nice LHR 3060 Ti or 3070, or a 6700 XT if you don't care about ray tracing and DLSS. Put the money you save into an investment, or a savings account, or buy crypto or an NFT, bet it all on black. By the time the scalper pandemic ends, you'll have either got money to put towards your next upgrade, or you'll have learned a valuable lesson about gambling, grifting, and pump and dump schemes. At least you'll get to play some games in the meanwhile. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.